It's Sunday, November 19th, 2023. Please make sure to like this video, share this video, share all my videos with your friends, people you don't know, people you do know, put it all over your social media. Let's continue to wake people up and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Without further ado though, let's get into what's happening. Uh, should be an interesting week. Before the week starts out and the market's open, I want to just, I'm going to touch on a few articles I was reading earlier today. And please feel free to comment down below. Love to uh, hear your opinion. A lot of people read the comments down below. You've woken up so many people by adding to those comments. So many people reading them, thinking. You're making people think. You're making people uh, become more self-sufficient. You're making people question themselves, think outside of the box. So keep the comments coming. The economiccollapse.com, Michael Snyder's site. The bottom 80% has gotten significantly poorer since the health crisis began. And this is creating a Robin Hood mentality all over America. And I'll go through this article a little bit. I'll paraphrase. But if you get a, a couple minutes, you should check it out, read it. We should all be doing our homework now. The rich are getting richer and the poor have been getting poor. And this is causing all sorts of societal problems. And it's going to continue. The wealthy are flaunting wealth all over social media, uh, all over the uh, uh, television shows. And they're flaunting the Lambos, they're flaunting the steak dinners, they're flaunting the elaborate vacations, the big boats, the Rolex watches, the big houses, you name it. And there's a lot of people, especially a lot of poor people, watching this. And they're watching this while they can't even pay their bills. They can't pay their utility bills. They're working paycheck to paycheck. They haven't saved up any money. Yet, they're just focused and almost... Um, addicted to these television shows, watching other people live the dream. And this is probably going to cause problems. Uh, as of June, the bottom 80% of households by income, when adjusted for inflation, had lower bank, bank deposits and other liquid assets compared to their status back in March of 2020. The vast majority of Americans are getting poor. It's almost like they want to live through other people on social media or through these um, television shows uh, where they just love to, to watch the wealthy and just dream about having this type of life or being a reality star and driving, you know, exotic cars and, you know, floating around on big boats and eating at the best restaurants. And unfortunately... Uh, more people don't want to work. They want to sit at home and actually watch the stuff and dream that somehow this is going to happen to them without working hard. The gap between the wealthy and the rest of the U.S. is the greatest in history. So this wealth gap continues to widen and the, 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 the wealth gap now has gotten the widest we have ever seen in U.S. history. Millions of Americans have re received a pay cut over the past two years thanks to inflation. You know, this inflation tax now that everybody's paying for it. And people don't realize that $7 trillion that was injected into the economy over 30 months, uh, the triple P loans, the uh, benefit checks, the unemployment benefits, all this was all going to have to be paid one way or another, and now it's being paid through inflation. The Labor Department reported Tuesday that the average hourly earnings for all employees was $11.05 in October, a 3.32% decline from January 2021. Layoffs, ladies and gentlemen, are going to continue to pile up. We've been watching uh, the layoffs uh, in mortgage companies, banks, um, retail. Now here, Stellantis, one of the big three automakers on Monday, offered buyouts to about half of its salaried employees as it looks to cut costs. Uh, this is the parent company to Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram. Uh, they're offering 6,400 buyouts of its roughly 12,700 employees. And yet we're being told that everything is just fine. Everything's good. 
This is a great time to buy a house. Go run up your credit cards and buy Christmas gifts for people who will forget about you in two months. 40 people looted a, Fed a FedEx truck last Saturday, 53-foot 53, uh, 53 uh, semi, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, we are, we're watching more and more of this take place. Uh, it was the FedEx truck before that. It was the UPS truck. We're seeing more stores robbed. We're seeing uh, now trucks are being robbed. Uh, they're stealing people's watches. Uh, they're stealing their cars. And so we have this mentality of steal from the rich and I'll just keep it, I'm poor. This is extremely dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. This thought process, this mindset that it's okay to steal from a company or an individual because they have more money than you, this is extremely dangerous. People, unfortunately, don't want to work. They don't want to get ahead. They want somebody else to pay their bills, pay their college tuition, uh, pay for their watch, pay for their food. And if they're not going to work for it, I guess it's just easier to go rob a truck, to go rob an individual, to go take somebody's car, to go break into somebody's house. And this crime wave continues to spiral out of control. So what do you think? Is it okay to steal from corporations because, well, they're not paying people. Maybe they're stealing from you, so I'm going to steal from them. Is it okay to steal from somebody that has more money than you? Is it okay to steal from somebody because they have a nice house? Maybe they worked really hard. They made huge sacrifices. They took big risk in life. They gambled, and it paid off. And so now um, I guess it's okay to just go break into their house, steal their jewelry, steal their cars, walk up to them, take the, the, the Rolex watch off their wrist, and now it's, it's – um, Justified. I don't know. I don't think I, I don't think it's okay. Uh, I'm not huge on corporate America. There's no doubt crony capitalism capitalism taking place. We're not living in a capitalistic society. We're living in crony capitalism, and there's a big difference. And so, yes, corporate America has gotten way too big, way too powerful. But I don't know if just uh, stealing from people or stealing from stores is the solution. Please comment down below on your thoughts on that. would love to know what you're thinking. But I'll tell you what, I mean, it, it's getting very, very dangerous because maybe you're not a millionaire, but you have a nice watch and you go out to dinner one night to a nice restaurant and, you know, you make $75,000 a year. You have a nice watch on. You're with your family. Is it okay for somebody to just come up and take your watch, take your car? I, I, we're living in really um, concerning times. Dallas, Los Angeles, the largest shoplifting as U.S. economy falters. Retail theft in Los Angeles was up 109%. Dallas, it was up 73% during the first half of 2022 and 2023. How much longer? I, I see, I think everybody's going to pay the price here because, you, you know, why, why are prices going up? Well, yes, there's inflation, but prices are also going up because so much theft is taking place that companies, store owners, corporations have to pay more in insurance costs because of the billions of dollars being stolen every year. How much longer can retail stores continue to stay in business with this much theft? And you have to ask yourself, how about small businesses? They don't have the deep pockets like the big retailers, like the big corporations do. How long can a small mom and pop business, say they own one little retail store and they're getting robbed, they cannot stay in business very long. So everybody's going to pay a cost here. And then when the stores close, the jobs go, the tax base goes, the neighborhood goes, uh, then you have another vacant building. Who owns the building? Who are the investors? What, ha what happens to the bank? Then all of a sudden now, you know, the, the, the regional bank who made the loan on, on uh, these retail spaces go out of business. It's just everything is just spiraling out of control. It's all connected. And we're all going to pay a price here, ladies and gentlemen. November 30th is the deadline, the mortgage forbearance deadline. And I haven't really been paying much attention to this, and, and I probably should be, and maybe all of us really should be, because uh, when you look at Freddie and Fannie loans, 320,000 homes that Fannie and Freddie made loans to are in forbearance. That means they're behind. They're not making payments. 
Five states with the highest share of mortgage forbearance, Washington, Idaho, Colorado, Utah, and California. When you look at how many people now are struggling with their Airbnb properties, their VRBOs, their short-term rentals, how many of these homes in the next 12 months are going to be forced to go on the market, going to be listed because these investors who bought these homes can now no longer find people for these short-term rentals on Airbnb and VRBO and what have you. And so many of these small mom-and-pop investors are going to have to, to list these uh, properties for sale or they're going back to the bank. Now we're talking 320,000 more homes that are in forbearance presently uh, that if people cannot begin to make these payments, they're going on the market or the bank's taking them, then they're going on the market. And this was interesting too. Uh, the truth about mortgage.com. Foreclosures halted for VA loan holders until June 2024. No foreclosures for VI, VA loan borrowers through May 31st of 2024. There is an estimated, get this, now something I, I was completely unaware of. There's an estimated 147,000 veteran homeowners behind on their mortgages. 140,000 veterans are behind on their mortgage payments, ladies and gentlemen. What is going to happen to these homes? Now, this is going to be halted until the end of June. Or excuse, excuse me, it says June here, but in the article, excuse, it's May 31st. So it will be halted till June. Uh, by June 1st, it's no, it, it, they're, they're, they're moving forward, right? So May 31st is the end of the of the forbearance June 1st it's game on at this point you may if you have a VA loan you make the payment or you're gonna have some problems apparently foreclosures halted for VA loan holders until June 2024 May 31st being the last day you know it shocks me that we are giving money out like it's candy all over the world and we have nearly hundred and fifty thousand veterans behind on their home loans, in, in forbearance right now. Does something not make sense to you? Why in the world are, are our veterans in this situation? We have no idea where all this money's going. The Pentagon can't even account for $3 trillion. We're sending hundreds of billions of dollars to, you know, all over the world to these countries. We're, we're, we're financing wars everywhere. And we have veterans right here that that are, are possibly looking at foreclosure. They can't, they're, they're behind right now. They're in jeopardy. And then we have other people who've lost jobs, have hit some bad times, had some bad luck, and now we just think it's more important to send hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars all over the world. It, it just absolutely, to me, is absolutely repulsive. A slap in the face to every American who pays taxes or risks their lives uh, in the military goes all over the world, pays a huge price, loses a limb, and now they don't know how they're going to uh, make their mortgage payment. But don't worry. We're going to give countries all over the world more money. LA Times, October 18th. A 16-year-old girl was viciously beaten at an LA area high school. Security guard accused of standing by, doing nothing, just watching. This happened at Baldwin Park High School. This girl was brutally attacked outside a bathroom stall as students filmed it and the security guard stood by and watched. Um, I bring this up in closing today because 80, 90% of the time we're discussing what's happening financially uh, right here in America and across the globe, why you need to be preparing financially. We need to be talking more about not just the financial collapse, but the societal collapse, uh, the, the moral collapse, the spiritual collapse that's taking place right now, the lawlessness that is taking place. Your kids are not even safe in school. This is not like your basic, you know, bullying where somebody, you know, pushed a kid or uh, took their lunch or yeah. this is really, really serious. This girl was hospitalized. Okay, what a brutal situation. Security guards there and did nothing. A security guard stood there and did nothing. And other students, what did they do? They filmed it. It's entertainment now to watch somebody brutalized. 
This is why I cannot stress enough that if you have kids, your kids are learning self-defense immediately today. You um, cannot ignore what is happening in the world. You cannot ignore these stories every day. This uh, kid who was just murdered at this Las Vegas high school by about 20 students attacked him. I think five or six now are up on murder charges. Kid was 16, 17 years old. Everybody that attacked him was, was 16 to 17 years old. They killed a kid um, basically purely for fun. And now that I'm reading this with this, this young girl, I mean, who in the world, what, what is happening to young women today where girls are brutalizing other girls? It's, it's really, really shocking. Uh, it's, it's almost really embarrassing as a nation to, to see what's taking place. But you have a duty to your children to protect them. You can't be with them 24 hours a day. They're going to go to school. They're going to be out in the real world. They're going to be in public. They're going to be at a Little League game or a basketball game. They're going to be at a party. You can't be there. But one thing you can do is set them up for success. That if there's a confrontation, that the odds are in their favor, that they're going to win that con uh, confrontation, or they're going to survive that confrontation without going to the hospital. I cannot stress enough that you, that you invest in your kids, that they know how to take care of themselves, that they have self-defense um, training. It's so important, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not preparing your kids for the real world right now in self-defense, is so important, so critical, especially for young women. You really are setting your kids up for, for failure. Don't do that. Set them up to win. Um, it's going to give them uh, more confidence in life, in school, in sports. It's just going to give them more confidence all the way around. And in the worst case scenario, they're ever involved in a confrontation. Heaven forbid somebody tries to take one of your kids. They're going to have training. They, they've, they will have already dealt with confrontation hundreds and hundreds of times, thousands of times in training. And so they're going to deal with it and at least have a chance of survival or at least minimize the damage. So I think this is something that's so important right now. As we're ending the year and getting ready to start a fresh year, I think this is a time to get your kids involved in self-defense, knowing how to take care of themselves. And it's not just for boys. If you have little girls, I think it's even more important for, for a girl to know self-defense. I'm going to leave it there today. God bless every one of you. Thanks for supporting the channel, the prayers, the letters, all the support. God bless every one of you. Please comment down below. Please share. Please like this video and please subscribe. Have a wonderful evening. And as always, I look forward to speaking with each and every one of you. God bless.